Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low-budget wonder. Now check this out. To make sure the yeast activates, it's not a bad idea to mix one teaspoon separately from the whole mix. Just add one quarter cup of warm water and another teaspoon of sugar so the yeast has something to feed on. This will help it rise and grow. I also like to use my fingers and mix it till it's smooth so I know everything is dissolved so it has a chance to react and activate. Then you want to let it sit at room temperature for about 10 minutes till it doubles in size. In the meantime you want to start adding your dry ingredients starting with 3 cups of flour, about a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and about a half teaspoon of garlic powder which is optional. And it's not a bad idea to give this a quick mix. Then you want to add a cup of water, a little bit of olive oil, and checking in on our yeast we can see that it's doubled in size so we'll be adding that as well. We know it's good to go. And just for fun I'm going to add a pinch of honey. Again this is optional. Now if you don't have a mixer, like I've got here, you can do this all by hand. But in the mixer I spin on low setting for about two minutes and by hand it takes about ten. And once the dough starts looking like this, you know you're done. You can start peeling it off your dough hook or off the sides of your bowl. And if it's sticky like this, you did it right. But you don't want it to stick in the bowl you're going to use to store and refrigerate. You just drop a little bit of olive oil and mix it around like this. As you can see here, pulling it from the mixing bowl is a little bit tough. But when you round it out here a little bit, and then drop it in the uh, bowl with the olive oil, it'll come out much easier. And I do both sides. That way the top won't dry and crack. If you want your dough to maintain its round shape, all you got to do is press your fingers around the outside edges. But the bowl will do its job and work its magic. Just cover it with saran wrap. and You're going to refrigerate for a minimum of 30 minutes, but full fermentation will take 24 hours. And when you're ready, just throw down some flour and start working your dough. Hopefully at this point you've decided what you want to make, but if you need a few ideas, let me show you what I've got. You can press it into just your standard pizza. You can stretch it out, roll it out, turn it into a calzone or even fill it like a stramboli like I've got here. And if you look at this crust, you can see my dough is awesome. Look at the bottom of this margarita pizza. Perfect. And check out how it worked for my stramboli. All of these recipes are included at the end of this video and in the description below. And there you have it. Pizza dough right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing we'll start is with our sauces. We'll combine the tomato sauce and the paste. Give that a quick whisk. Now we'll add our other ingredients, starting with the garlic powder, then our onion powder, our black pepper, our oregano, the Italian seasoning and the brown sugar. And again, we'll whisk this right up. Once you got it combined like this, it's a good time to give it a little taste. Make sure it's exactly the way you want it. Once it looks like this, give it a few minutes on the stove so those flavors can really fuse together. And then you can separate it in a separate bowl or dish. 
And there you have it. Pizza sauce right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing you want to do is work your dough. Now if you need a recipe for this, I'll plug one at the end of this video and in the description below. Now I'm going to be using a baking stone and in order to use that I'm going to need a pizza peel like this one right here. Now this is made by Vita Versa. And what you want to do is put a thin coat of flour or cornmeal like I'm doing here right over the top of the aluminum to ensure that the dough doesn't stick. And then you want to lay your dough right over the top of that and start building your pizza. Now today I'm making a nacho pizza so I'm using green chili verde sauce as my pizza sauce. And of course my recipe for this will be at the end of this video as well. Then I like to hit it with Colby Jack cheese. And other ingredients are going to include this peco de gallo, some pepperon chilies, some olives, and this Kahlua pork which I'll plug at the end of this video too. Now I always layer in the meat first. Then just come back in with the uh, peco de gallo. You know this has the pepper, onion, tomato, cilantro. Then hit it with the pepperon chilies. Now as I start to drop in these black olives, you can start to envision the idea behind a nacho pizza. Then a little bit more cheese to infuse all these ingredients together. Now as you can see here, I like to put my stone on the bottom rack of the oven. That's going to allow more concentration of the heat, give it a nice crisp crust. Then just slide your pizza pail right in on the top, give it a little bit of a shake and you're going to bake at 550 degrees for six minutes. The nachos are often topped with cold lettuce and some fresh avocado, so it's a good time to go ahead and chop some of this up. And by now the pizza should be done. So you just take the pizza peel and work it like a spatula. Just scrape it right up, pull it right out. Looks good, huh? Now you just want to hit it with that fresh lettuce. Go ahead and top it with that avocado. And it wouldn't be nachos without a little bit of sour cream. Now that's what I call the goods. Now Vita Versa also sent me this pizza cutter. Let's see how good it works. Seems to rip through just fine. Now just so you can see the benefits of using a baking stone and a pizza pill, take a look at the bottom of this crust. Isn't that perfect? And I highly recommend serving each piece with a side of nacho cheese. And there you have it. Nacho pizza right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. Starting with some veggies, I'm going to use some tomato, scallions, black olives, fresh parsley, chopped garlic, and some bell pepper. But you can use anything you want. And I like to tie all those flavors together with some pork sausage and I'm going to be seasoning it with some Italian seasoning. And I'm going to add in some star anise. Really helps the sausage bring out its natural flavors. Once that's cooked, I just drain it out into some paper towels. Now we'll be adding all of our veggies to a large bowl, our tomatoes, and our pork sausage. Stir that in real good. I like to add the mozzarella cheese. And that's what she should look like when she's done. Now when it comes to our dough, you can portion it out 
into about eight sections. And if you don't have a dough recipe, hang on to the end of this video and I'll get you one. Then you just pull them all individually apart like so. And then what you want to do with each individual section is just proportion it into kind of a round shape. Something like that. And you're going to smash it flat so you can start working it. Now it's a little bit oblong, so what you want to do is take your other hand on the side and just spin it and work it back into a round shape again. And then if you want, you can crank out your roller and just roll it out all nice and flat and thin. Work it until it's about this size here. You can stretch it, pull it out here a little bit. And what you're looking for is about that thickness and about the size of your hand. See? It's about the size of my hand. Just going to work it a little bit more to get it just right. And then you just take a big old scoop of our mix, put it right there on one side of the dough. Fold it over like a taco, and then on one side you're going to press all the way almost to the middle and do the same thing to the other side but you're going to leave the middle open. Now just turn it up here on its back side so it's upright and then you just open up the center flap. I'm going to add just a little bit more to make sure it's completely filled up. Pinch the sides once more to make sure it's not going to come apart. And then add a little mozzarella cheese just to top it off. Just like that. And I'll add that to the pan. And once you've got a couple of these going, you can go ahead and throw it in the oven. And we're going to bake at 500 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes. Now if you're wanting to do a traditional calzone, all you do is work it all the way around like this. And then the sides I like to do a little bit more like a pot sticker because it's easier, it's faster, and it stays together just as well as the traditional Italian way of doing it. You just fold these little pleats like this. And then you get it all the way around until it looks like that. Then you want to come back with your knife and ventilate your calzone. Just a few little slits like this. And here's our canoe calzones, right out of the oven. Throw it on a plate, a little bit of marinara or pizza sauce, and there you have it, canoe calzone right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. Here I've got some risen pizza dough, and if you need a recipe for this, I'll include a link at the end of this video. And the first thing you want to do is form your crust, and I like mine thick. Then you want to stretch it out, then you're going to work it with your fists. And then if you want to have some fun, you can even toss it in the air a few times. Doing this really helps get its shape. And I'm going to be making a 12 inch pizza pie, which is pretty much a standard medium. So the next step is to drape our dough over the pan and just shape the edges. Just like that. Now what do you like on your hamburger? Probably some tomatoes, maybe some onion, and I like red onion definitely some pickle and believe it or not we are going to put lettuce on our hamburger pizza but trust me it's going to turn out just fine but what's a burger without bacon and cheese now in a hot pan I'm going to break up some ground hamburger by hand 
I want big chunks in this recipe. But we need to season it with some salt and some black pepper. Then you want to just move it around a little bit, separate it into smaller pieces, just not too small. And you're just going to brown your meat, cook it thoroughly. Then when it's done, just set it aside and let it cool down. Now our pizza needs its sauce, and in this case we're going to be using mayonnaise. Now if you think like a hamburger, but think upside down, that's how we're going to build our pizza. That's why the first thing I'm dropping in here is lettuce. Now our onion. Tomatoes. One more in the center. Now add in some of the cheese, starting with provolone. And cheese is usually melted over the top of hamburger, so we'll be laying in the ground beef next. But what's a hamburger without cheddar cheese? But then again, it wouldn't be a pizza without mozzarella. But don't forget the pickles. or the bacon. And just a little more cheese will mold this all together. Then it's off to the oven. I like to put it on the bottom rack to ensure the crust gets crispy. And you're looking at 500 degrees for 8 minutes. Now that's what I'm talking about. I like to hit the crust with a little bit of olive oil all the way around. It just makes it shine. And there you have it. Hamburger pizza. Right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. But before I let you go, let's go ahead and cut out a slice. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. I'm going to start with some chopped red onion. We're going to slice up some bell pepper. We're going to chop this up as well. We're also going to need some tomato. I'm going to use two romas. And we're going to cut these up into bite-sized pieces. I'm also going to be using some scallions. Some fresh parsley. And we want to chop this up real fine. Also a few fresh basil leaves. Again, we'll chop this up nice and fine. And we're going to need a couple of cloves of garlic and chop this up till it's practically minced. I'm going to add some sliced olives and definitely some fresh olive oil. And then some oregano, some Italian seasoning, some fresh kosher salt, and some black pepper. Then I like to come back and squeeze a fresh lemon right over the top to help these flavors pop. Then just give it a good stir and let it marinate for about five minutes. Now here I cook some Italian sausage. I'm gonna go with four of these and just chop these up into bite-sized pieces. Now we'll throw down some flour so we can start working our dough. And if you need a recipe for this, I'll include it at the end of this video. But all you do is you take one full length of pizza dough and you just stretch it out here like this. If you flop it up and down as you pull, it makes one nice even stretch. Then I like to press down on it firmly, back and forth, and then I'll hit it with my roller, working it from side to side here. 
but the important thing here is really to keep it even. And once you've got it to the size you want, you can start with some cheese and then lay your vegetable filling right over the top of that. Now notice I left some space around both ends. That's going to play a role in folding this up. But then lay down your Italian sausage and then hit it with some pepperoni. The last thing you want to do is lay down some more cheese. Then you want to start folding in both ends. Now just start working it like a burrito. Folding it up and holding firmly until you get the entire side. And then you can work the opposite side, pulling it towards you. And that's where you make your seal. And then I just like to work it firmly, make it even, and then roll it back over here because this is the top. Now I'm going to set it on this well greased perforated pan. I got to wrap it like a horseshoe because it's huge. And I just cover it up with a little bit of egg wash, which is just one beaten egg and some water. And we got to make some air vents here. One in the middle, one on each end, one in the middle of those, and then one in between each of those. Then I sprinkle a little bit of kosher salt right over the top like a pretzel. Then we'll take it to the oven. And you're going to bake this for 15 minutes at 450 degrees. And when you're done, this is what it should look like. I like to brush olive oil over the top. And it also helps make the dried oregano stick better as I dash it over the top. Now you've got a completed two foot stramboli ready to be sliced up, dished out, and served. So let's take a look at that inside, shall we? And there you have it, Stromboli right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. We're going to start out this recipe with some garlic. Chop it up real fine. Now in a bowl we'll pull some olive oil and we'll add our garlic. A little bit of uh, salt. And we'll stir that together real well. A little more olive oil. Now once that's stirred in, you want to taste it. Make sure it's not too salty. Next thing you want to do is cut your tomatoes about this thick here. And we're going to marinate those in this olive oil, garlic, and salt mixture. That's what's really going to give this margarita pizza its flavor. Once you stir them in real good, just let them sit for about 10 to 20 minutes. Now, fresh basil. Do not use dried dehydrated basil. Fresh basil only. And here's our pizza dough and our marinated tomatoes. What we're going to do is press off the tomatoes and just drizzle all of the marinated garlic oil over the top of the pizza here because that's going to be our sauce. That's going to create such a flavor you just won't believe it. Incredible. Just smooth it in with the back of your spoon, the same you would any pizza. Now, we're going to take some provolone cheese. I want to throw that down here. We're going to top that with some mozzarella.
I'm real picky with it, so I want it perfect. Pizza's an art, you know. Now our fresh basil. My hands are wet, so it's kind of sticking to my fingers, but just spread it out evenly, just like you would the cheese. Now, our tomatoes. And I just spread them out like pepperoni. And once again, we'll take this olive oil garlic mixture right over the top. There's too much flavor in it not to do that. And there's garlic in the bottom here that needs to drop over the top, so that'll help the flavor tremendously. So don't let that waste. And then last but not least, we'll just go ahead and top it off with just a little bit more mozzarella for it to just melt in and fuse all those flavors together. And off to the oven. I'm going to throw it on the bottom rack there. 550 for about six minutes. And now she comes, still sizzling. Get a good look. Perfect. It's exactly the way you want it, right here. You can see the tomatoes, the basil, the cheese, everything it looks perfect. I'll just throw it on a cutting board here after it's cooled. And give it a slice and a dice. Now, if you get a good look at it here, you can see the bottom is the way you want it crispy on the bottom. Perfect. And there's your margarita pizza right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.